What's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to take a look at an awesome coin door by XRK. Now I've looked all over the internet and I found a lot of cheap ones. I found some more expensive ones, but this here is $49 for the double slot. If you're looking for just a single entry version, they're $34.99 on their website or Amazon. I'll leave links in the description. I actually bought this to put into my Rec Room Masters Alpha K. Now I'm going to be running a PC in there, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a coin acceptor on your Raspberry Pi running RetroPie. Now, in order for the, all of this to work, you will need to be using some sort of arcade encoder, or if you're running arcade buttons from the GPIO pins, that'll also work. If you want to go cheaper than this, you can always get on Amazon and get one of the multi-coin acceptors. It accepts tons of different coins from around the world, but I wanted a nice door here, and they don't offer the doors. It's just a coin acceptor itself. The X-Arcade version here does have the light up 25 cent stamps. Comes with a little included 5 volt power supply. Also comes with all the mounting hardware we need and some keys for the front door in case you need to service the unit and you don't want to go to the back of the arcade machine. So everything looks really nice here. We're going to go ahead and move around back. I want to show you how this thing functions. Then I'm going to show you how to set it up on a cheap arcade encoder for the Raspberry Pi running RetroPie. By the way, this does come with a few lead wires. Depending on what you're using for buttons and encoders, you might want to swap these out or you can just modify the ones that are included. So setting these up is very easy. I know it looks complicated back here and that's because of the coin acceptor itself, but all we need to worry about is this little switch here. If you look at the switch, NO and NC. NO is normally open, NC is normally closed. 99.9% .9 of arcade encoders are gonna use normally open. So we're gonna be connecting a wire to the common or the ground, and the normally open. Basically, this is gonna be acting as an arcade button. All it's gonna do is bridge those two wires together when the coin passes through, and it's gonna act like it's pressing a button. Recently, I modified my Street Fighter Arcade 1UP machine, and I'm just gonna be using this to demonstrate here. It's not gonna be going in the Arcade 1UP. I'm gonna be using this in my AlphaCade. But we're using these cheap encoders, and they're great for the Raspberry Pi. I've got all of my other buttons wired up to the encoders. If you're interested in modifying your arcade one up machine, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. I did a full tutorial, but as you can see, we're using these cheap zero delay encoders. And like I said, they are great for the raspberry Pi. Usually they come with a few extra cables like this. So basically what we're doing here is adding another button to the arcade encoder. And that button is going to be the coin acceptor switch. It's not really a button, it's a switch, but it's going to act just like a push button when we insert a coin. I got my wires here that came with the X-Arcade coin door. And you're going to need to find a way to connect these to those wires. Now, I suggest just go ahead and cutting it and soldering it up. You can always just twist it on if you want to. We're not passing any electricity through here. It's not going to burn anything up. It's just a switch that's going to bridge the connection. And it doesn't matter where positive and negative go, these are not polarity sensitive switches. All I did was grab a few extra quick connects, had some laying around that fit in here, and I'm gonna plug it right in just like I would any kind of arcade button. So now we have the switch from the coin acceptor going into the arcade encoder here, and it's gonna act like an arcade button. So when we insert a coin, it's gonna bridge that connection from the switch in the coin acceptor, send the signal to the arcade encoder, and it's gonna act like a button press. It's very easy to set one of these up. And if you want a second player, just grab your other arcade encoder, set it up the exact same way. So we're set up on the arcade encoder end. All we need to do now is plug the other end here into one of the coin acceptor switches. Now make sure you plug in the correct side. In this video, I actually plugged my first player into the second player coin acceptor. It was fixed after the fact. And remember, it's not polarity sensitive. We're gonna put in a ground here, and I just happen to have the green going to my ground on the arcade encoder, and we want the normally open over here. So normally open means it's always open. When the button is pressed, it closes the switch. The arcade encoder detects that it is closed, and that sends a signal to your Raspberry Pi or PC or whatever you're running. 
So the way I just set mine up is for a strictly coin operated arcade machine. Some people might want to put NES or SNES games on their machine, so they're going to need a select button up top also. So real quick, I'm going to show you how to wire that up if you want to select up top also. So I got a select button here. All I'm going to be doing is pretty much taking this button here and the coin acceptor switch and running them as two buttons to the same exact line on the arcade encoder. So basically, I will now have two select buttons on this machine here. One physical button up top and one physical switch in the coin acceptor itself. And the lead wires that come with the X-Arcade coin door are already pretty much set up to do this. I'm just going to add some bigger quick connects to the end of here. Now you might want to go out and buy some different connectors or do some soldering. So I'm going to connect the switch to the arcade encoder now. So this will work as my select or my coin button here, but I'm going to add an extra button in line here. So all we're really doing here is adding two buttons to one input on the arcade encoder. But like I mentioned, I'm not going to set mine up like this. That's just in case you want a select button up top. All I need is my coin acceptor to be my insert coin button or my select because this is going to be for an arcade machine running only arcade games. I'm going to go to configure input. Yes. I'm going to set this side up here. Up, down, left, right. I'm going to use this as my start button. And now I'm going to put a coin in for select. As you can see, it moved down the list. I'm going to map the rest of my buttons here. And since this panel here does have an extra button up top, I'm going to use this as my hotkey. So when I want to exit a game, I just press start my hotkey. It'll exit me back to the emulation station menu. All I need to do now is start an arcade game. I'm going to go with Neo Geo. And we'll do Samurai Showdown. This was the image I set up for the arcade 1UP machine, but this coin acceptor is not going in there, trust me. Let it load up. As you can see on screen, we need to insert a coin. We have zero credits. None of my other buttons are working as my select or insert coin. So I'm going to put a coin in here. Got one credit, two credits, three credits. So yeah, I mean, that's basically it. I now have a coin acceptor for arcade games on my Raspberry Pi. So I've used one of my credits to start the game. We're at two credits now. I'm going to put a couple more coins in here. There's three credits and four credits. And to top it all off, the best thing about having one of these is the sound of inserting the coin. If for some reason you can't map this in the emulation station menu when you map your controller, you can always go into RetroArch. Most of these arcade games, if not all of them, will be played using a core from RetroArch. So we'll go to the RetroPie menu, find RetroArch. From here, we're going to go to Settings, Input. Input user one binds, and we're going to find select here. So there's select. I'm going to grab me a coin. It's going to give me a few seconds to do it. When I insert the coin, it's going to map it in RetroArch for us. So now that is our select button. In arcade games, the select button is going to be your insert coin. Make sure you save the configuration. Back up. Quit RetroArch. Now I'm going to test out another MAME game here. I'll just go into my arcade section and I'll pick something random. I do need to go stock up on some quarters tomorrow. Need to wait till it says insert coin. Come on now.
All right, there we go. Insert coins. I'm going to throw one in. We can now start playing. So yeah, I think this is going to go real nice in that alpha cade. The outer edges are all metal, but the interior here seems like it's a plastic. Either way, it's going to work out fine in there. Same color as the cabinet itself. And it just adds a little something to the whole experience. Having to insert a coin to play your favorite game, in my opinion, is pretty awesome. Now, it's my own machine, so I can go through and pull the quarters back out if I want to. But I think it's an awesome addition to a do-it-yourself arcade cap. So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching, and I hope this helps some people out. Keep an eye out on the channel because in the next few days I will be adding this to my Rec Room Masters Alpha Cade. I think it's going to go really nice with this setup. The Alpha Cade is an awesome little machine. Now I have a Ryzen 2200G mini PC powered in that thing running big box. It has real Suzo hat buttons and sticks from the factory and it uses an iPack arcade encoder. It's a very high quality cabinet and I think adding this coin mechanism here is just going to set the whole thing off. If you could, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.